imagine receiving a frantic late night call, only to discover that the voice on the other end is begging for help against something unseen and sinister. A woman possessed, a demon in the form of a snake, and a family under siege by dark forces. This is a story of fear, faith, and a battle against pure evil. Stay with me as I take you through a chilling true story that will leave you questioning what lurks in the shadows. Please leave a like for us before we start our story. Our story starts now. Late in the evening, my phone rang. It was Mrs. Arupa calling me for help. She sounded frantic, speaking so quickly that I couldn't understand a word. I asked her to calm down and suggested that she come to see me in person so we could discuss her problem. I assured her that I would do everything in my power to find a solution, whatever it might be. Not long after, a pickup truck sped into my yard, as if someone was in a real hurry. A woman and a man jumped out and ran toward me in a panic, as I was already standing in the doorway, watching what was happening. It turned out to be Mrs. Arupa and her son Jason. Sir, sir, I was the one on the phone with you earlier. My daughter-in-law is possessed by something. I don't know what exactly, but I think it's demons. Please, come quickly, the woman begged. She pointed to the pickup and asked me to follow her. I did, and in the bed of the truck, I saw a woman thrashing violently. She growled, screamed, her eyes rolling back to reveal mostly white, and she flailed her arms and kicked wildly. This was Olivia the daughter-in-law Mrs. Arupa had mentioned. A man was holding her down. This turned out to be her husband, Harry. Harry struggled to keep his wife under control as she lashed out like a madwoman. This was because my property is culturally protected and my spiritual guardians ensure that my surroundings and home are well protected. Anyone with bad intentions or spiritual demonic issues would feel uneasy on my grounds. This was also the case with Olivia, who saw my spiritual guardian surrounding me, which terrified her. She screamed as if she were burning alive and couldn't bear it any longer. You must understand, this woman, Olivia, was completely possessed by demons, which is why she reacted so fiercely and aggressively the spiritual protection of my property. At one point, Jason had to step in to help his brother Harry restrain his wife. It seemed as though Olivia had the strength of four men combined, pushing the two strong men away as if they were mere children. But the men didn't give up and did their best to hold her down because she kept trying to run off the property. I told the two men to let her go. Let her be. She's not going anywhere. I'll take over from here, I assured them. They looked at me in surprise, as if to say, but won't she run away? I ignored their looks and focused on Olivia, who immediately went still once they released her. The demons inside her knew what was coming next, so a deadly silence fell over the area. I saw Olivia's eyes roll completely back, turning entirely white. It was eerie to see, but I knew it was just a distraction tactic by the demon. I didn't let it throw me off and began the rituals to trap the demon. I then clearly saw a large, silver-colored snake manifesting around Olivia, with bright green eyes glaring at me angrily. This was the demon taken possession of this woman. It tried to scare me by revealing itself, hissing and making all sorts of frightening sounds that came out of Olivia's mouth. 
I continued the exorcism rituals without being distracted by the demon's aggression and tricks. After more than an hour of intense spiritual work, it seemed the demon had left her body. She calmed down, her body relaxed, and she began speaking normally with her own voice, recognizing the people around her once more. She expressed how exhausted she was, confused and unaware of where she was. After giving her a brief explanation, I sent the family home so they could recover from this harrowing experience. The family promised to contact me to let me know how things progressed. And the next day, they were to return for more rituals for protection and purification. Early the next morning, I received a phone call. It was Olivia calling me personally. She told me she still felt that something was very wrong with her. I feel like I'm not alone. There's something with me. I'm just constantly afraid, she said, her voice trembling. I asked her to come by with her family in the afternoon so I could investigate further. When they arrived, I immediately began the rituals because I was curious as to how demons could still be lingering in her body. Typically, once I finish my work, a demon should not be able to return or remain in the body. But in this case, I hadn't yet completed all my rituals, so maybe that was why they could return. As I was working with my spiritual guides to delve deeper into what was happening, I suddenly smelled an overwhelming odor of decay. The stench was so strong it made me nauseous. As you might have guessed, this was another demonic distraction tactic by the snake, which felt threatened by the rituals I was performing to expel it. I maintained my focus despite the foul smell and persistently continued the exorcism rituals until I was done. Then I initiated the cleansing ritual, followed by the protection ritual to ensure the snake couldn't re-enter this body. The stench persisted until I finished all the rituals, then suddenly vanished, as if it had never been there. Olivia came to at the end of the rituals, confused, hungry, thirsty, and once again, extremely tired. She hadn't eaten much lately, as the demon inside her had prevented her from doing so, causing her to lose a lot of weight. This was why she was so ravenous when I finished the rituals. My spiritual investigation revealed more about the demon that manifested as a snake. It is someone from your neighborhood who wants to destroy you, and that's why this vile creature was sent to you, I told them. Mrs. Arupa and her family members looked at me with a mixture of surprise and sadness. She said, when my husband, Waldy, passed away a few years ago, everything suddenly went wrong in our lives. It was as if everything just started going against us. Everything we tried failed, and there was always a shortage of money. We had to pinch every penny to get by, which was not the case before. It was incredibly strange because we all have jobs that earn enough money, but still, we all have financial problems, and we can't make sense of it. Jason, Olivia, and Harry all work, and together we make more than enough money, yet it keeps going wrong. There's always an urgent shortage of money. I nodded and listened intently to Mrs. Arupa's story. She looked desperate and continued her tale. It got so bad that our savings disappeared without anyone in the family using it. It sounds like utter nonsense, money just disappearing, and no one has used it, but it really happened. This caused a lot of tension in our home because everyone started accusing each other of theft. The tensions escalated, and it seemed like everyone couldn't stand each other in the house because no one trusted anyone anymore. 
I couldn't bear all the fighting and accusations around me and wanted to move elsewhere. Maybe I could find a new man to start a new life with. I felt I deserved happiness again in my life. In the end, I chose my family and decided that finding a man wasn't so urgent. So I stopped looking for a new home. But where did it go wrong? Did you know then what the reason was for all the misfortune? I asked. What happened was that Richard, my late husband's brother, showed up shortly after his death and made it clear that we had to move. He claimed that all the land and the house belonged to him since it was inherited land. I refused to leave my home, of course, because Waldy and I had worked so hard to build this house. We nearly broke ourselves to make it happen, but the house stands here today. And suddenly, Richard thinks he can take this house from me. That's not going to happen. And I made that clear to him. He didn't expect me to stand my ground like that. And he left our home that day, furious. He was determined to get the house and land. That much was clear. From that day on, he held a grudge against our family. And soon after, strange things started happening in our home, including what happened to Olivia. You saw for yourself how she was possessed by something. I had a feeling from the start that Richard was behind this, but I didn't want to accuse anyone without proof. Mrs. Arupa explained, Olivia was mentally the weakest link in your family which is why she was the first to be affected by the curse that was sent. But the attack wasn't just for her. It was for your entire family. It started with Olivia, but you all would have been victims. And it is indeed your brother-in-law, Richard, who sent the demonic snake your way. I can confirm that. Because in my spiritual investigations, I found out that this is someone from your own circle who is working with black magic to destroy your entire family. By eliminating you, the properties would automatically go into his name. That was his goal. But now I have resolved all of this for you and Richard can no longer send anything to harm you because I have placed the right spiritual protection for your family. Anything he tries to do spiritually will either fail or bounce back to him, I said. After I finished my work for the family, they were able to go home. If anything else went wrong, they were welcome to contact me again. But to this day, that has not happened. The only thing I've heard is that since my protection and cleansing, everything has been going well and they haven't had any more strange problems. They finally have peace, and the money flow is back to normal. Their jobs go well, and everyone in the family gets along. They still wonder how everything could have gone so wrong, but fortunately, it's all in the past now. However, Richard's life went downhill after my interventions. He soon lost his job, and his health deteriorated rapidly. He was bedridden for a long time until he passed away. He died alone, friendless and poor. If this story sent chills down your spine, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more terrifying tales. And don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss an upload. Let us know in the comments what you think of this encounter with the supernatural. Could you face the darkness like this family did? Stay tuned for more stories that will keep you up at night.